Last year has been interesting for Intel, that's for sure. In fact, it was a damn mess. AMD clobbered them in the desktop market, Ice Lake ended up underperforming, and the new Comet Lake CPUs for notebooks were more or less the same. In fact, just a few weeks ago, we got our first taste of AMD's mobile Ryzen CPUs, and the performance was just through the roofs, which eventually put Intel in a lot of trouble. Now, throughout that whole time, people have been asking for a desktop refresh since Coffee Lake has been around for more than a year now. So today, we finally have an answer. Intel, later this month, will be launching a load of new Comet Lake Tension CPUs for the desktop side. And the story basically aligns with what we saw on Comet Lake processors for notebooks, which means we're gonna get more cores, higher frequencies, a new socket, uh, a new platform, sorta, kinda, and oh yeah, uh, some interesting prices too. So what you'll be seeing over the next few minutes is Intel reflecting on what AMD did back in the FX days. You see, back then when AMD was still using the same old manufacturing process, they had to sacrifice on thermals and power consumption to achieve higher frequencies. And it looks like history is about to repeat itself, my friends but this time it's coming from Team Blue. So after burying their heads in sand without any price cuts for Coffee Lake and pretending AMD didn't exist, is Intel gonna wake up? Or is it too late to stop bleeding against Ryzen? Let's find out after this. Take your gaming experience to the elite level with ViewSonic's XG27 series. Bridging the gap between gamers and people who appreciate color accuracy, the XG27 QG offers stunning visuals with 165Hz 1440p Nano IPS panel and a G-Sync module. Meanwhile, the XG270 comes with a blazing fast 1080p 240Hz display, along with the PureXB blur reduction certified by Blurbusters, resulting in crystal clear visuals in fast moving objects, making it the ultimate gaming monitor. Both also come with RGB ambient lighting and a flexible headphone stand. Learn more down below. All right, so I want to start things off with the most important thing, and that's the new socket called LGA1200 design. So yes, 8th and 9th gen processors won't be compatible with the new motherboards, and the new CPUs can't be installed in the current LG1151 socket. Most of those additional pins are to power the higher end 10 core CPUs, but we're told some are also reserved for additional functionality sometime down the road. There is some good news though. Usually Intel keeps their sockets around for two CPU revisions, which means technically these new motherboards should be compatible with Intel's next generation of processors, but there's just no real sense into investing in a new platform uh, if you plan on upgrading so quickly. It just doesn't seem practical. So I'll get into the new Z490 motherboards as well as the LGA1200 socket a bit later on, but for now, Let's focus on these new CPUs. Is there anything really new? Well, no, not really guys, since they still use the same architecture as Coffee Lake, but it's been optimized to deliver higher speeds. You see, in order to deliver those frequencies more consistently, Intel needed a way to better manage temperatures. And that means moving to a thinner CPU die that's topped in a soldered thermal interface material and a thicker IHS to dissipate heat more evenly. Also, some of these refresh CPUs will have access to Turbo Boost Max 3.0, which singles out the processor's two best cores and then boosts those to higher speeds without increasing voltages. And as for how well that translates into the lineup, well, every processor basically has four different submodels. There's the K, which includes an IGP and overclocking, and the KF that has exactly the same speeds but removes the IGP and costs a bit less, any CPU without a letter at the end is meant to offer an IGP and a lower TDP with reduced clock speeds. Finally, there's an F model with identical speeds as the more efficient version, but it has disabled graphics core and only the K-series CPUs can be overclocked. Some things you'll see as common on all of these processors are memory speeds of 2933 MHz, the same 40 platform PCI lanes as Coffee Lake had, and the same old UHD 630 graphics. So yes, Comet Lake is basically a refresh of 9 gen. Starting right at the top is the i9-10900K, which has a 10 core, 20 thread layout, and it can hit some pretty insane speeds of up to 5.3 gigahertz when two cores are active. To hit those speeds with 10 cores, Intel needed to up their TDP from the 9900K's 95 watts to 125 watts, and we all know that number is probably on the low side. The other high-end CPU in this lineup is the i7-10700K, which has eight cores and 16 threads, and oddly enough, it doesn't have a thermal velocity boost like the 10900K. Either way, this is basically a 9900K with higher frequencies 
and lower pricing. What you'll generally see is Intel trying to align their i9 with the Ryzen 9 CPUs, the i7 with Ryzen 7, the i5s with Ryzen 5, and so on. But let's talk about that pricing because Intel is trying to be a bit more competitive on that front. But still, it's gonna be a huge uphill battle against AMD though. You see, the i9-9900K had remained pretty much constant at $490 to $500 through its lifetime. And it's got killed on the value front by AMD. Now, Intel is offering two more cores and four additional threads for the same price, which means the 10900K ends up competing against the Ryzen 9 3900X. That AMD beast has 24 threads, but Intel is betting their higher clock speeds end up resulting in better gaming performance than Ryzen. Personally, I think the lower price market is gonna see some really interesting battles as Intel's i7 hits back at the Ryzen 7 series by finally enabling hyper-threading on the i7 CPUs. The 10700K offers the same number of cores and threads as the Ryzen 7 3800X at technically a slightly lower price. But it looks like Intel's competing with the 3800X's suggested price, and that CPU has been selling for between $330 and $350 for months now. Moving on to the i5s and the i3s, and things get a bit weird. First of all, none of these processors have Turbo Boost 3.0 technology, which means their highest clock speeds will only be hit with a single core active. Also, for whatever bizarre backwards reason, Intel decided to step official memory support down to 26666 MHz. I just don't get it. Even the H series notebooks we checked out recently, all the i5s and i3s have support for 2933 MHz. I mean, sure, DIYers can push higher memory frequencies through XMP profiles, and Intel does argue that higher memory frequencies are necessarily needed for lower end processors. But to me, all of this just sounds really, really odd. Either way, it's really amazing to see AMD push Intel really hard uh, to increase core counts by enabling hyper-threading on all of their i5 and i3 CPUs. Unfortunately, the i5-10600K is the only one that's unlocked. So it looks like Intel still wants to limit overclocking access to their higher end CPUs. But let's look at a few comparisons. As you can see, Intel has progressed from six core CPUs with SMT disabled to something like the 10600K, which is supposed to target AMD's 3600X. The problem here is the same one I mentioned before. A lot of AMD's mid-tier processors are selling for much less than they were launched for. So while the Ryzen 5 you see here was $250, it's now closer to $200. And that means the 10600K ends up sitting between the 3600X and the 3700X. The last CPU I wanna really focus on is the i5-10500, which also has 12 threads, and that's a big improvement over the 9500. It's going head to head with AMD's Ryzen 5 3600, which still goes around for $190. So this could be a really interesting head to head comparison. And let us know if you're interested in something like this. Moving down from that, and there's a massive log jam of four different Intel processors between $185 and $125. Intel's obviously doing this since uh, in other region-limited Ryzen 5 3000 series, AMD doesn't really have anything in these ranges. The closest they've got is the $120 Ryzen 3 3300X that's launching next week. I'm guessing Intel's hoping that the 8-thread i3-10100 will help out there, but I have a feeling that AMD might win that battle too. Below $100, Intel has quite a few options as well, but those are all dual-core chips without even the most basic Turbo Boost features. They're really meant for budget systems and not much else. This also means that Intel will be leaving the $100 Ryzen 3 3100 all alone without any competition whatsoever. And now what about motherboards? Well, we have a pair of new platforms called Z490 and H470, but from a high level view, a lot of them are just refreshes of Z390 boards with expanded features. And just to be clear, Comet Lake CPUs don't have support for PCI Gen 4. Let's take a look at this Aorus Z490 Master. It has additional power inputs to handle the new power-hungry CPUs, more high bandwidth USB connectors than the Z390 generation, and with one other thing. Yeah, uh, all right, all right. Let me explain what's going on here. That's PCI Gen 4 hardware, but these new processors won't have official support for PCI Gen 4 devices. And supposedly a lot of the motherboard manufacturers will start making this claim. So what's really going on here? Well, it could be shady marketing or it could be something else. It could be a mystery that none of us know. Uh, but Gigabyte did mention that all their boards will have the necessary equipments and the PCB traces 
So if Intel does decide to launch the next generation processors to have PCI Gen 4 support, you know, they're already in here. So yeah, you see, that's a pretty big stretch in my opinion, since it assumes Intel will make upcoming architectures drop-in compatible for LGA 1200 motherboards. The other problem really has to do with the Z490 platform itself. But to understand that, let's take a look at what it's all about. Right now, both the Z490 chipset and the CPU can only support Gen 3 graphics. Not only that, but the DMI interface between the chipset and the processor still uses the old four lane setup. That means it can transfer a maximum of four gigabytes per second of data, and that isn't enough for Gen 4 on top of all the other IO. So the only option is for the CPU to generate those Gen 4 lanes and Comet Lake just can't do that. So what's actually new to Z490? Not that much actually. There is now integrated Wi-Fi 6 support instead of 802.11ac and the option for Intel's 2.5G LAN. And that's it. Seriously, Z490 is basically Z390 with support for Wi-Fi 6. Honestly, I really wish that Intel offered a little bit more on the platform front to compete with what AMD has, but that's not the case. So I think I'm gonna wrap up this explain video. Expect to see our full review in the next few weeks, but from what I can see right now, it looks like Intel might have something a bit more competitive, but would that be enough? I don't really know guys, because I mean, sure, you're getting more cores, higher frequencies, but there is really not anything new that's going on, especially since the lack of features on Z490. I mean, I don't see anything extraordinary with this new platform. And that to me is a bit concerning. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below. I hope you guys are staying safe. I'm Ibar with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.